Every tire you will ever purchase will sooner or later end up in a scrap pile. Even through normal usage, all tires experience fatigue and will eventually become scrapped. They also encounter road hazards that cause non-repairable damage and end their life prematurely. Tires are also subjected to abusive conditions for which they were not designed. There are many reasons why tires end up in a fleet scrap pile. All too often, once a tire is determined to be junk, the ledger is closed and the tire is forgotten. However, there may be things to be learned from these tires that could help lower your overall tire costs. By incorporating a review of scrap tire inspections into your maintenance program, it may be possible to institute changes in your fleet's operations, maintenance practices, or tire program, which can give greater value to the tire dollars you spend in your operation. To understand the different types of damages that can happen to radial tires, it is helpful to know how a radial tire is put together. The foundation for the radial tire is the construction of the specially designed bead bundles. Steel cord material is wrapped radially between each bead bundle. The steel belts are laid over the radial casing to add stability and protection against road hazards. The rubber products are an integral part of the radial tire and are added during various stages of production. Butyl rubber is used in the interior of a tubeless tire to reduce air loss. Special aging resistant rubber is applied to the sidewall to protect the steel casing ply. Finally, an abrasion resistant rubber is added to the crown of the tire for additional protection and to enhance traction and mileage. The approach to scrap tire inspection should always be systematic. You should have the following tools in order to make a scrap tire inspection. A clipboard with forms or other systems for recording your data. A tire crayon, blunt probe, tread depth gauge, and a pair of heavy duty gloves. Another tool which is very useful is spreader pliers or snap ring type pliers. This tool enables you to open up an injury to see the extent of the damage. We are now ready to begin our inspection. Forms and systems are available from Michelin to aid in collecting this information. Record the necessary tire information such as tire manufacturer, tire size, tread design, ply rating, remaining tread depth, the number of retreads, the retread DOT date, and the tire manufacturer's DOT date. Specifically, the last three or four digits show the week and year the tire was manufactured. Keep in mind, most manufacturers use a triangle indicator located after the DOT number indicating the tire was manufactured in the 1990s. If there is no triangle, it would indicate the tire was made in the 1980s or earlier. For year 2000 and beyond, you will find the week is a two-digit number and the year is a two-digit number. Once this data is recorded, you are ready to begin a thorough inspection of the tire. Ensure that you have adequate lighting. Mark a line across the tire tread, which will indicate the beginning of the tire inspection. Inspect the tread area first. Be sure to probe all injuries. Next, inspect each sidewall, including the bead area. Then place a line on the interior of the tire and thoroughly inspect the interior, starting at one bead and ending at the other bead. Sometimes the cause of the damage is obvious. In many cases, however, we are only seeing the effect. The actual cause is what we want to determine. All scrap tire failures are cause and effect related. In the majority of the situations, it is the effect that we first see when we look at the tire damage. However, Tire condition effects may have many causes. It is important to investigate and identify these causes. Often a pattern can be found which may identify changes needed to avoid future scrap failures of this nature. Surprisingly, the majority of tubeless commercial scrap conditions are found in the following five damage categories. Run flat, air infiltration, pinch shock, impact damage, with or without a casing ply rupture, and fatigue damage, with or without a casing ply rupture. A run-flat condition is created when a tire has operated at very low air pressure relative to the vehicle's speed and load being carried. Industry standards define run-flat as a tire operating at less than 80% of the fleet's operating air pressure. 
Low air pressure can be the result of a cut or any foreign object entering the tire, as well as leaks in any part of the valve and wheel assembly. The excessive deflection due to the low pressure causes the internal products of the tire to build up heat, resulting in the breakdown of the bonding agents in the tire. There are two types of run-flat conditions observed on tractor trailers based upon the position on the vehicle and the degree of air loss experienced in the tire. Tires mounted singly, as found on steering axle positions and on some tag or lift axles, will have a defined run-flat look. As the tire's deflection increases, the sidewall approaches the ground. There is a buildup of heat, which is indicated first as a series of stress marks or a darkened ring on the inner liner of the tire. The next level shows a series of blisters, which form on the tire's inner liner. At this point, the heat buildup causes the rubber products to break down and the steel casing plies to separate. Once sufficient separation exists, the remaining air pressure will evacuate through openings in the sidewall rubber, which can generally be heard by the driver. Once the air is out of the assembly, the tire is sandwiched between the wheel and the road. If the tire continues to run, the tread and belt area is usually torn off of the casing. The casing is then further shredded between the ground and the wheel. If a slow air leak is the cause, you will generally see a ring worn into the tire's sidewall. This condition occurs from the sidewall running along the ground as the tire deflects down. This ring is generally found only on one side of the tire on a rigid axle vehicle. In the case of rapid air loss damage, such as a large sidewall injury, there will be no ring worn into the sidewall. A tire which is run flat on dual tire positions will have a different appearance. Since the deflection of the tire is lessened by the support of the other dual tire, it takes longer for the results of run flat to be seen and damage to be created. However, damage from this type of run flat will eventually be as dramatic as if it ran on a single tire position. To accurately inspect a run flat for its cause, it is important to gather as many of the pieces of the tire as possible. The pieces can be fit together, showing a clear picture of the cause. Remember, a wheel was part of the assembly and should also be inspected as a source of potential air loss if no obvious cause is found in the tire. Dual wheel run flat conditions will be discussed in more detail later in this video when we look at zipper damage. The next scrap tire condition is air infiltration. The tubeless tire liner is a layer of butyl rubber bonded to the inside of the casing. The primary purpose of the inner liner is to be an envelope to hold the air in the tire. That in turn puts tension on the radial steel cables, which enables the tire to support the load. Air infiltration occurs when there is a damage to the inner liner, allowing the internal air pressure to travel within the steel and other rubber products, causing a separation. Air infiltration can be found in the tire's sidewall, bead area, and crown belt area. The primary causes to look for are nails, bolts, and debris perforating the tire, section or nail hole repair patches, cracking, splitting, or lifting. Tire bead and liner damage can be caused by improper tire mounting procedures. For example, the small cuts found on the inner liner caused by the use of the bill end of a tire hammer when mounting the first bead onto the wheel road hazard conditions, such as a radial split following an impact, and manufacturing conditions such as inner liner splice cracking. A pinch shock condition is the next effect discussed. This occurs when the tire is sandwiched between the wheel and a blunt object such as a curb. This damage can vary in magnitude, starting with a light crease in the steel sidewall cables. This is generally not a reason to scrap the tire. In a more severe case, the wheel can damage the guide rib and lower sidewall area. Look for wheel damage as well. In addition, there can be internal damage to the tire, such as a tearing of the rubber products between the carcass and crown plies, as well as the creation of a radial split condition. Both conditions, without careful inspection, could be overlooked and create a separation later in the tire's life. Pinch shock damages are primarily seen as trailer tire damage. However, all wheel positions on a vehicle have the potential to experience a pinch shock condition. As the length of trailers increase, so does the potential for this type of damage. 
Pinch shock conditions are often confused with guide rib or chafer separations. The way to distinguish between the two conditions is that pinch shock tends to be a localized damage often accompanied by abrasions and cuts in the sidewall. Chafer separations tend to be more circumferential in nature and are associated with casing fatigue. An impact damage is the result of an impact with a sharp object under the dynamic conditions of speed, load, and pressure. You will generally see cuts in the rubber from the impacting object, as well as a clean severing of the individual steel cords at the point of injury. Emanating from the point of injury may be a rupturing of additional steel cords in the sidewall if the impact is very severe in nature. A fatigue damage, on the other hand, is a distortion or opening in the tire sidewall area generally caused by weakened body plies resulting from fatigue or oxidation of the steel. To distinguish between fatigue and impact, look closely at the body plies. In a fatigue rupture, the individual strands of one cable will be of different lengths. Comparing a close-up view of an impact versus a fatigue damage, we can see the different look of each tire condition. As with an impact damage, a fatigue damage can also rupture out from a weakened area. The most significant causes of this condition are damaged cords, resulting from the following. Cuts in the crown or sidewall area, allowing moisture to reach the steel cables. Bead damage. Improper repairs. Objects wedged between duels and dueled wheel run flat. This zipper rupture is a premature fatigue condition in a casing. What makes this condition serious is that it is generally created after the tire has been removed, improperly inspected, repaired, and re-aired up. A close look at the sidewall plies in a zipper rupture will reveal the uneven detachment of the cords within the sidewall, and the ends of the individual cables have a stretched appearance. Looking at the deflection of a flat tire on a loaded dual tire assembly will show how this condition is caused. Here is a view of both tires at 100 PSI with normal deflection. Here the inside tire has been reduced to 50 PSI. Note the change in deflection. Finally, we have reduced the inside tire to 20 PSI. This has created an extreme deflection in the inside tire sidewall. An X-ray taken of this type of run-flat damage shows the individual broken sidewall cords. When improper tire inspection and tire mounting safety instructions are not followed by a fleet, potential injury could result. It is important to follow the recommended industry procedures when changing potential run-flat tires. Please refer to the RMA Tire Information Service Bulletin, March 1995, Volume 33, Number 2. The following are some additional tire conditions which occasionally appear in scrap piles. They will be presented in an effect and cause format. This is a tire which was rejected by a retreader for weather checking in the sidewall. The tire has been placed on a spreader with the beads extended as it is done during initial inspection at a retread shop. Note the apparent increase in severity of the sidewall cracking. Here is a cross-section of a tire with a greater degree of weather checking. You will note that the depth of the cracking is superficial and should not affect the tire's retreadability. There are several sources in the industry for templates and scales which can be used to determine the degree and severity of tire weather checking. The next condition to discuss is bead damage due to brake heat or burned beads. This condition is caused by extreme heat created in the brake drums during frequent brake applications with little cool down. The condition can also be aggravated by over-adjusted brakes or mechanical problems with the vehicle braking systems. This tire has what appears to be a separation in the tread area. And this tire looks like it has a series of sidewall separations. Both are the result of rubber swelling caused by exposure to petrochemical products such as grease, oil, or diesel fuel. This is evident by a decrease in the hardness of the rubber and in many cases by an odor on the rubber itself. Understanding the reasons why tires are being scrapped is important in the protection of your investment and in lowering your overall tire cost. You should know what caused each of your tires to be taken out of service.
operating conditions, avoidable or unavoidable, require an understanding of all potential causes and resulting effects on the tire and the tire budget. This video has reviewed some of the most common causes for tire removal. The conditions were categorized in the following areas. Run flat, air infiltration, pinch shock, impact damage, and fatigue damage. There are currently numerous methods in the industry for documentation and analysis of scrap tires. Your Michelin Tire representative will be happy to assist you in the implementation of such a program in your operation. Remember, the obvious damage seen on scrap tires is possibly only the resulting effect. Understanding the cause is what is important to improving your tire maintenance program. Analysis of your scrap tires may also reveal some casings that may be returned to service in your operation. At Michelin, we want to provide solutions to help you lower your tire costs. Michelin, a better way forward.